So how does a seismometer work? Uh, and we will try to understand why we made this device, how it works, and uh, what is the current working strategy or the engineering behind the seismometer. Uh, the problem pool that we were presented with uh, as part of the frugal science course was uh, very vast. And amongst that, we had uh, selected a problem that concerned the elephants, uh, which raided crops in rural India because crops are a tasty uh, meal for them and while raiding crops they used to destroy a lot of crops which got the farmers very angry and the farmers fought and uh, there was a loss of there's a very recurring loss of lives on both sides on the elephant side as well as the human side uh, there are many events across the year uh, where this conflicts uh, these conflicts result now what 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 can we do about it so uh, we came up with uh, an, an affordable solution is can we detect uh, the presence of elephants in a village right uh, or, or on its outskirts and how do we do that in a frugal way so uh, before we come to that in the current state how do farmers repel the elephants so um, they they use camera traps or they um, when, when an elephant is seen, the farmers drive the elephants away using firecrackers or electric fences or uh, loud noises. But these are often uh, not effective, especially when the elephants raid at the night time. So the farmers have to keep monitoring their crops uh, throughout the night, which is a very tiresome experience. Um, some NGOs have started working on this problem and they have created camera traps, uh, laser detectors whenever an elephant crosses a laser detector it starts blinking or it sends a sms uh, to the farmers that an elephant has crossed <coughs> some things like these uh, are used uh, our our idea was why not use a mouse uh, and can we detect the ground vibrations emitted by the elephants so we proceeded with that and um, you may ask why vibrations and the thing is that elephants use these seismic vibrations to communicate long distances and uh, they might use uh, emit very low sounds which get coupled to the ground and transmit uh, instead of transmitting through the air. These uh, vocalizations of foot signatures could be a powerful way to identify a group of elephants if they approach a village. Let's say we, we hope that we could uh, understand uh, the presence of elephants say about a kilometer away at the, at the least uh, or let's say uh, five six kilometers away which would be a great thing so uh, we don't know if we could do that but uh, there are multiple factors it depends on the ground properties it depends on many things so it's just our, our device is an attempt in that direction so how do we detect vibrations in general okay so a very common thing is a smartphone that has an accelerometer uh, that can be used to detect vibrations uh, of course the human body itself is very sensitive to vibrations uh, we can detect vibrations low frequency vibrations in the ground in the table in the building whenever there's a heavy truck passes by we can sense these vibrations uh, one of the common things when, when we talk about instrumentation one of the common ways of uh, detecting vibration is is based around the concept of a pendulum now imagine a rigid ground uh, on the image here and there's a suspended uh, mass which is sitting on a spring now what will happen is that um, uh, and and what we could do is just attaching a small let's say meter to this suspended mass uh, we can create something called a seismometer which is detected which is an instrument to detect these vibrations. Now, a seismometer is basically um, a stand connected to the rigid ground, and there's a meter here, and there's a flexible arm. Okay, this arm can go up and down as the mass uh, as the mass may go up and down. So, uh, what will happen if there's a vibration uh, in the building? Let's say. So, if the vibration is in this direction, the mass will the ground will move but the mass because it uh, it has some inertia will remain in the same position but what that implies is that 
there is a relative shift between the mass and the ground okay and the spring allows for that shift okay but the meter has moved with the ground right whereas this mass has moved towards the meter uh, and so the meter shows a change in reading so that's how a seismic wave is detected and if we record these movements these change in changes in the meter over a long time we'll get a continuous wave expressing how far or how powerful the vibration was so that's basically how a seismometer works now this same principle has been used in the olden days uh, in the same way you see a spring you see a rigid body and a mass suspended and whenever the vibrations used to take place earthquakes used to take place this whole mass would remain steady whereas the whole other part completely with this cylinder recording cylinder would move so you might get some signals like this okay in the more modern times like in recent times uh, something called a uh, geophone is used where it is the same principle but instead of forming impressions on a piece of paper uh, the signals are recorded uh, in the electronic format and amplified significantly using electronics uh, so here there's a complete uh, sealed mass and there are some springs here which allow this inertial mass over here to move up and down okay but what in fact happens is the ground moves and the ground is connected to the external body the external body is connected to a permanent magnet all these structure everything moves but inertial mass because of inertia resists that movement okay so it waits it, it there's a delay between the movement of the inertial mass and the remaining body and that delay causes a change in the position of the magnet with respect to the inertial mass and that uses using induction uh, causes a current to form in this coil and this current the small very minute current is detected by electronic amplifiers uh, uh, outside the system so this is a very common way of doing it but uh, these things uh, may all these systems may be slightly more costlier than we can afford in a rural india so uh, thus we thought about coming up with sea mouse meter um, the idea was can a common optical mouse be used as a detector okay and the way we hacked it around we can and uh, uh, it uses along with the common mouse it uses a laser pointer uh, the whole structure is con uh, created out of pvc tubing and other some common components uh, so this is something that uh, a diy uh, kind of environment can afford to make why the optical mouse because an optical mouse is basically a very high speed camera okay uh, it it looks at uh, a region beneath the mouse and there is a lens that uh, forms an image of this region directly onto the camera now every time the mouse moves it is taking images at around 3000 frames per second and it is subtracting each image from the other to find out the difference if there is there's a difference that implies that the mouse has moved uh, some distance how far the distance has been uh, is calculated by how far the pixels have shifted okay so this is a very common a very high powerful camera with a very high speed um, processing all going on in one chip and that mouse is hardly available for 400 500 rupees uh, and it's so common that every school kid may have used a mouse uh, and and this this high sensitivity device high sen highly sensitive devices are available to us for our experiments so it's cheap it's common it's plug and play and it's high sensitive highly sensitive so how does it work uh, initially we started by looking at something called speckle interference during our work so what happens is there's a light source here and there's a screen and another screen uh, where the light source is projected let's say we have a small slit in a the in the middle screen okay and there will be uh, an interference pattern created on the uh, the Im the image uh, screen right one slit creates so many interference patterns what we do is use two slits so they are 
close by, uh, the interference patterns can be easily detected. Uh, and you can see um, the shape of the slit implies the shape of the interference pattern. Now what will happen if there are there's a there are two new slits which are uh, perpendicular to the original slits what kind of pattern will form right it will form a pattern like this squares uh, that that you can see now what happens if there are multiple uh, slits and randomly oriented with each other right what you'll see on a screen is something called speckles pattern and this is exactly what happens when you point a laser to a wall and you will see there's a and and it's reflective reflected off the wall if the wall is rough and it's reflected on off to some other place or if you point it at the floor and it projects on the wall you'll see not a dot but multiple dark and uh, bright spots and that's what a speckle pattern is. So we started exploring uh, the speckle pattern. Uh, this image only shows that the speckle pattern is actually a speckle volume, uh, even if the the screen is slided uh, closer or away from this speckle, uh, this um, scratched surface or uh, interference slits, uh, the speckle pattern won't change. It will still be formed. So this is the initial concept that we had explored. And the only thing we had done is uh, we had allowed this interference slit or this, this screen that produces interference pattern to move independent of the body. Okay, so the laser remains fixed, the projection screen remains fixed, the mouse remains fixed, but this screen is allowed to move. So what happens is if this screen moves, the speckle pattern moves, okay? And you can use a small mouse to detect this speckle pattern and it will be detected as if your cursor is moving every time there's a vibration, right? Now, this thing works, but then it's not as sensitive. The reason is that, you know, it, it's, um, there's no magnification in it. So what we did is, along with this, we incorporated uh, a, a, a small lens. So in this setup, you'll see an optical mouse and there's a beam that is rigidly fixed on one end. And at the end of the beam is a piece of translucent plastic that has been scratched. The surface has been scratched. So this scratch surface actually forms multiple sources. Okay, this laser forms on this line and multiple sources are created. And each, uh, so each, each scratch actually forms another laser light. Uh, another monochromatic source of light and if there had been no ball lens over here you would have seen a, a huge uh, a large speckle pattern forming on this mouse okay what we have done is we have added a ball lens a ball lens is a simple lens and that is commonly available as part of a fold scope microscope this ball lens uh, allowed us to focus on the minute scratches and project a very large image of that scratch on the sensor of the mouse. Uh, note that the mouse no longer has the inbuilt lens. The same lens inside a mouse has been removed and shifted over here. So that's another alternative way of finding a ball lens. So instead of ball lens, you can just hack the mouse itself, remove the piece of lens and place it directly over here. And in this way, and there's a weight attached to it. So when there's a vibration happening, this whole strip flexes up and down and that causes the translucent plastic to uh, move up and down with respect to the laser and the lens and that causes a very high uh, so even if uh, let's say if you if it moves one mm over here it might move um, quite a lot of distance over here something around 100 mm or 200 mm depending on how much magnification is being achieved by this whole system so that's the basis of sea mouse meter uh, any kid should be able to create un innumerable forms of this CS mouse meter in different setups. What we have done is try to make it as simple as possible. And uh, this is the first prototype that we made. Uh, you can see the YouTube video over here. 
uh, there's a mouse here and there's a lens here and there's a laser here you can see the red laser illuminating uh, a, a lens over here and the image travels through this tube into the image sensor of the mouse there is a beam on top of it that actually vibrates when the table vibrates so the this is explained in the video we made another prototype uh, prototype 2 but that didn't quite work well so we have prototype 3 over here which is again the same system but uh, it has been uh, you, you can see the size is increased I, initially the size was only one feet the length uh, between the mouse and the lens was only one feet so magnification was limited but now it's around one meter and so magnification is quite high the details of this uh, prototype you can find it on this channel which I'll link in the uh, notes below the way it works is uh, there's a mouse and there's a long one meter cantilever arm there's a small lens over here and there is a scratched translucent piece of plastic over here and a laser so the laser illuminates this small piece of plastic and the mouse and the lens catches uh, this small illuminated region and projects it onto the mouse this whole thing is covered in a uh, PVC tube so when the table vibrates uh, the mouse can capture the uh, vibrations in the vertical and horizontal planes, uh, uh, frames together so what kind of graphs does this produce here is a kind of graph it's not really perfect but it kind of captures the kind uh, the sensitivity of this device on x-axis should be the time uh, uh, it should be uh, the 20 the 60 minutes whereas y-axis is the 24 hours um, and so it all these vibrations actually either could be a result of walking around the instrument or could be uh, the results of uh, the normal seismic vibrations uh, in the workshop where I have made this device. So I, 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 my workshop is in an industrial zone with a lot of heavy industries around. So vibrations are a very common uh, phenomena in this workshop. So that's what you are seeing over here. You might also find something like a spectrogram where um, a spectrograph uh, where frequencies on the y-axis and the time is in the x-axis and the intensity the color actually shows the intensity of the signal so this is uh, an old spectrograph uh, spectrogram of um, a previous experiment we have done this uh, all it shows is that between this time and this time there were there was a signal and that signal had multiple prominent frequencies so you can see the different prominent frequencies and we are expecting something like this coming off from an elephant when we try to monitor it so what's the next plan uh, we want to build better prototypes for sure uh, that involves either we could uh, incorporate a gaming mouse which has a very high sensitivity uh, we, we I, I couldn't make it work yet so that's one thing that we want to do and another thing is we want to also have um, proper recording methods proper logging methods so that we can log the data for a long time uh, like complete one or two days uh, and then analyze it and uh, we want to log it in a format that anyone else can use it also so there's something called mini seed is a standard format seismologists use we want to uh, log it in that format um, and we want to the overall objective is that it should be very sensitive so uh, from our mentor we have seen that uh, the Raspberry Shake, which is another device, has a sensitivity in which it can measure a human walking 100 feet away on ground, right? So that's what we would love to have. We haven't reached that part yet. So that's the kind of sensitivity we want. And we would like to convert uh, the output of this device into sound. So we want to compress the infrasound uh, level, uh, seismic vibrations, transform it into audio, uh, so that the person who is near this instrument can hear the sound and instead of processing everything in terms of in uh, spectrograms the processing could 
be done in the brain of the person who is hearing the sound and that that compressed sound should be able to in some way help identify if the signal is coming from an elephant right and the the power of the sound should be able to identify uh, how close that elephant might be to the station right and finally we want to once we have verified all this we want to make a complete package that will have the power supplies the weather protection uh, the electricity fluctuation protection a backup uh, everything into a package and this package could then be implemented in a field because in a field as you know people may not have the technical uh, bandwidth to repair any of these devices or uh, troubleshoot them so we want a complete productized uh, package by the way all of this is open source so it, it the idea being that many people could work on it create parallel ways of making multiple devices of of this sort and basically help in monitoring either the elephants or monitoring anthropo anthropogenic sound sources like uh, um, a bulldozer might create a lot of seismic vibrations which might detect the ecology uh, at multiple places so a device like this can help detect if human induced sound sources are uh, a major factor in an ecologically sensitive zone so currently we don't have enough of these devices to detect that so that is these are some of the applications of the, this device uh, special thanks to all the team members who have helped uh, me create this device uh, we were part of the frugal science 2020 course uh, cecilia nish uh, sumitra have all helped we collaborated uh, on on this from uh, from a remote location we couldn't get together because of uh, COVID uh, but we did uh, come across uh, many of these ideas discussed late night into many of these smaller aspects of this design and came up uh, with something that works so all thanks to the team and thank you that's the presentation